Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Sarif back at it again with a new Hunter build. Uh, so I believe this is probably the strongest Hunter build there is out there. Uh, after some tinkering and long-awaited change to the Gear Falcon Oberk, uh, this is probably one of the strongest, if not the strongest, Hunter build I've ever seen around. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is going to make trivial just soloing dungeons uh soloing master nightfalls even maybe grandmaster nightfalls and we're about to get into it and i'll explain all of this to you so uh, stick around all right so we're gonna start with the subclass for the subclass i like using the mobius quiver uh, super just because of the amount of damage it can deal uh the amount of mobs it can murder uh, the fact that it can just give you a bit of damage resistance while you can turn invisible if you're caught in a pickle uh it's pretty useful you could also use deadfall if you're aiming for longer dps phase and such but i feel like uh mobius quiver just comes in more handy most of the time uh you need to take into account though the the cooldown is longer a bit on the mobius quiver but it doesn't really matter much uh the gambler's dodge is what i go for just because we want to apply as much debuff as possible with this build so getting back our snare bombs helps us uh, applying weaken more often than not uh which is probably one of the well all three debuffs are pretty nice but it's a very good one if you were uh aiming on taking out champions or taking out something like a, a midi boss or just an hydra or something like that in a new dungeon so it's it's quite useful uh the grenade we're going to be using is of course suppressor nade because it's the only grenade that gives us suppression from the get-go uh again it has a longer cooldown than some of those but it's the, really the only right option for the build we're going for uh vanishing step is a better option for invisibility than trapper's ambush because we absolutely need those four fragment slots um Plus, we're going to be using a mod that lets us do something specific when we dodge. So having it be um, tied to our invisibility is quite useful. And Stylus Executioner, which is pretty much the centerpiece of this build, uh, is, is very, very important as well. For our fragments, you're going to want to be using Echo of Persistence to gain a bonus time duration on invisibility over shield and devour buffs. Uh, Overshield has been buffed this season, so it's even stronger than before. Invisibility has always been super good, and Devourer is our main way to recover HP. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. And don't mind the minus mobility, because we're uh, going to fix that in this next fragment, which every time we suppress a target, which we're going to do most of the time because of our grenade and our weapon, uh, Collective Obligation, it's going to reload our weapons and grant us bonus mobility, which is going to help us recover our class uh, ability. And dodging is what makes us invisible and lets us create most of our wells. So it's pretty, pretty damn good. Uh, Echo of Undermining you're going to want to use because uh, before that I would use this Echo of Instability to gain volatile round when I get grenade kills. It's, it's not... It's useless now because Gear Falcon Oberk has been buffed and every time you go invisible, uh, you get out of invisibility, you gain Voltai rounds, so get the fuck out. Um, we're gonna go with weakening targets with our grenade because weakening is very good and you're gonna do it even more often if both of your abilities can. Uh, don't mind the twin minus 20 discipline because as you see my stats in the corner, you're going to you're gonna want to focus on having as much resilience as possible, like 100 is pretty much necessary, and as much discipline as possible. The other stats don't matter that much, you're going to see why afterwards. Um, and for the last one, I go for Echo of Starvation because we need to get that Devour buff in a certain way, and it's the only way you can get it on Hunters. Uh, but it doesn't really matter much because the amount of kills we're going to be doing with Void Weapons is going to make us generate a shitload of Orbs of Power. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Now let's move on to the mods. So for uh, the armor, I use the Void Helmet uh, because I want to have Dynamo, which every time we use our class ability near a target, we gain, um, we gain super energy. So it's a good way to get a lot of super energy quite fast. Uh, well of Tenacity is not necessary. If you want to use something else, you could. This is like the main thing I would allow to change in this build, but I like Well of Tenacity. 
uh, in master or grandmaster content, it does make a difference. It grants us, I think, resist time three, uh, which is a very big um, amount of damage that you're not going to take. So it's quite good. And of course, you want to use Armonic Siphon uh, because you want to be creating those orbs of power as much as possible using void weapons. Uh, for the mods here, you're going to, again, want to have as much resilience as possible. And then what you don't, when once you're on 100 resilience, focus it all in discipline if you can. For the gloves, you're going to no want to be using uh, Font of Wisdom. The element doesn't matter because of that. I like going void because I can slot in those two little mods when I don't need to be using my uh, champion mods. But yeah, most of the time you're going to be slotting in champion mods, so it doesn't really matter much. Uh, for the now, this wonderful, great piece of armor, the Gear Falcon Oberk. Uh, again, resistant mods. Uh, if you're doing the new dungeon, I really recommend using Void Resistance and Concussive Dampener, especially in Master difficulty, because the only thing that really deals a lot of damage to you are Void Damage and Explosive Damage from the boss, the Hydras, uh, the Champions, and pretty much everything that deals a lot of damage will be dealing Void Damage. You're going to want to use Font of Wisdom as well, because we like uh, bonus damage. Uh, I mean, Font of Might. Font of Wisdom before is to get our super even faster. It gives us plus 50 intelligence for 30 seconds every time we pick up a uh, well of uh, a Void Well. Uh, Font of Might gives us bonus damage. We always love bonus damage, but you're going to see we have plenty of damage with this build. So it's not entirely necessary, but there's not really... I mean, it, it's pretty much a best in slot. Gear Falcon Oberk now. Your Void Weapons gain Volatile Round after you emerge from Invisibility. So, yeah, I mean, being able to make everything explode all the time is super freaking good. This piece of armor could only be that and it would still be broken, but no, it goes deeper. So, even more than that, when you are invisible and you defeat a combatant using a finisher, you gain bonus damage. And... You and your nearby allies gain a Reserve Overshield and improved class ability regeneration. These Reserve Overshield can be deployed by using your class ability. So what this does pretty much is that when you use a finisher uh, while being invisible on something, you gain bonus damage. You're going to gain bonus class ability regeneration, which ties into the fact that we really don't need much mobility, which is a pretty bad stat in PvE from the get-go. So even if you're a hunter, you don't really want to like invest into it. So this lets us completely ignore the investment in mobility because we get our class ability even faster. But also we gain we gain an overshield for us and our teammates. And overshield, as I said, have been buffed and they are very good now. Like you gain a lot of damage resistance on this portion of HP you have. Uh, and that's that's nice because you you get them your their class ability uh, faster as well and they can and you can as well actually choose when you want to deploy this overshield so it's just completely amazing it's incredible and it's probably the best hunter exotic there is out there uh i really hope it's not gonna get nerfed because Goddamn, Hunters need a win. I mean, Titans and Warlock builds are so freaking strong right now. We, we really need, we really needed something at least to get on their level, and I think this is it. For our boots, you're going to want to be using Better already, uh, just so that you can gain a bit more health regeneration when you pick up uh, an Orb of Power, which grants us Devour from the get-go. So it's going to help us a lot with staying alive. And Absolution is just nice because you get a bit of um, ability regen from those as well. Uh, so it's always pretty good. Uh, Reaping Wellmaker is going to be our main parenthesis way of, of choosing when we want to make wells. Uh, and wells is what grants us our super regen, our weapon uh, damage, void weapon damage increase and our resistance from uh, Wealth Tenacity. So Reaping Wellmaker is pretty, very good. And we're always getting our class ability, at least most of the time, because of those fragments and those other mods we're using and Gear Falcon Oberg, which gives us like our class ability all the time. And for our cape, you're going to want to be using this season at least. This is going to change in the future, but for this season, use Monochromatic Maestro. It's so good. Uh, pretty much every time you use an ability, 
or a weapon that matches your your subclass in damage uh, what's gonna happen is that you're gonna increase for I think it's six seconds the damage of your weapon using your abilities and then if you use that weapon you increase the damage of your abilities for by I think it's by 10% each it's not that much but it's still very nice to have so you just chain your your grenades and your melees and you steal those debuffs and then you shoot other targets so from the get-go our build is getting a big benefit out of uh, this mod because that's what we were gonna do from the get-go chaining abilities then weapon then abilities and weapon that's our main gameplay so it just enhances it uh, utility kickstarter is nice because I mean it's a small bump to our dodge every time we use it so we make sure we have it all the time so we can make even more wells and I go for elemental armaments um, because it's it's a pretty good buff uh, it's nice to be creating more wells and not having to focus on the gameplay that much just having them pop up once in a while uh, I could see some people wanting to go for a uh, solar cape and use bountiful wells instead this could be good uh, you could get your grenade even more often uh, with bomber, but it's not completely necessary to be honest. Uh, so that's why I'd rather go with utility Kickstarter and elemental armaments. But to be honest, you can you you make your your own choice with those two. Now for the weapons, what you're gonna want to be using, of course, is collective obligation if you do have it. Uh, what it lets you do is leech void debuffs that you apply with your abilities which are your smoke bombs and your grenades but also it lets you um, leech from volatile which is the debuff we're going to be applying after we come out of invisibility because of your falcon oberg uh, once you have some of those debuffs you can long press your interact uh, your reload button and that way you swap firing mode, increasing the damage of your weapon and letting you apply those other debuffs to other target. Now if you shoot a large target with uh, your debuffs right before you run out of your Void Leech buff, you can apply them and shoot again at that enemy, killing him, and get back all of those debuffs you just lost and restart like the routine of applying them again and again and again. And something else that is nice is that every time you gain uh, Devourer, Invisibility, and Overshield, which we're going to be getting all the time, uh, mostly Invisibility actually, because every time we kill something that is debuffed, we turn Invisible, it's going to reload the weapon automatically, so we don't really need to reload it all the time. Now, as I said, if you do not have Collective Obligation, it doesn't matter as much as before, because this season's weapon is Veles X. Now, what Veles S... Uh, what Veles X lacks in uh, damage, it makes up for in survivability. Now, instead of leeching the debuff, you're going to be uh, killing things that are debuffed and getting an overshield from it. And every time you get a kill, you can use another ability afterwards to kill something else. And that way you can gain uh, the 50% damage bonus from Golden Tricorn. It's not as good as Collective Obligation, but if you want to be using something else uh, that is exotic in your other slots, like... Wither Horde or maybe Galahorn or whatever, you're gonna be able to. Uh, for the other slots, I use Typen for FR because it's super good and you gain bonus damage from Front of Might because it's a Void Weapon. Uh, but I also recommend trying to go out of your way to get a good Commemoration or craft yourself one even better. Uh, because Commemoration is probably the best uh, light machine gun in the game and they are pretty strong right now. I also would recommend a good uh, Shotgun. Uh, I will want to go for uh, Heritage, the one from, um, there you go, found it, uh, Heritage, the, the shotgun from Deep Stone Crypt. Uh, so that's probably what I'm going to be using, because it's pretty good. Uh, you could also use Succession if you want a sniper rifle, again from Deep Stone Crypt, all of those weapons are pretty good, but snipers are in a pretty bad place right now. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it for the build. Uh, make sure you like or dislike the video according to what you thought about it. Uh, share with me in the description what you would make differently or your experiences with the build. And make sure you subscribe if you want to see more of those types of videos because I freaking love making builds and I'm probably going to keep sharing them. Uh, yeah, thank you for watching and uh, enjoy!